ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम example it is 1 x x square x 5 if you just know what we worked out for was r 5 right polynomial is degree less than or equal to 5 we or uh, 3 same proof will work for 1 x x square x cube x 4 x 5 also right so if i take all the powers 1 x x square x cube x 4 x 5 they are linearly independent and this is only a subset of it this is only a subset so this is a general fact if you are given a set which is linearly independent every subset has to be linearly independent obviously right and if a set is linearly dependent then a bigger set will be linearly dependent right because there is a linear combination which is zero here so you can may think it as a linear combination in the bigger set also right so anyway let us check it again so if this is equal to zero right C1 times 1 plus C2 times x plus C3 times x square plus C4 times x5 is equal to 0. Same proof I am repeating. If this is equal to 0, means what? This is a zero polynomial on the right hand side. So like powers, coefficients must be equal, and that means what? C1 must be 0, C2 must be 0, C3 must be 0, and C4 must be 0. Same reasoning, right? Okay. Let us look at this. One so i am looking at all polynomials now i am looking at the polynomials 1 x 1 plus x square and 1 minus x square it is a linearly dependent set why dependent if i want to show it is dependent what should i do show some linear combination is zero where not all the coefficients are so here is one produced minus 2 times 1 Plus zero times x plus one times one plus x square plus one times one minus x square equal to zero, and obviously here one is coming minus two is coming that is not zero. So that is a linearly dependent set. Okay. Right. So that's how we will check something is independent or dependent in a abstract vector space. Now we have defined independence. We have defined what is generation. so something which is independent and generates we call that as a basis of that vector space so what is the basis it is a linearly independent set and every vector right v is a linear combination of course finite only right so s may not be finite right but it is a linearly independent set okay and second every vector v is a linear combination of some finite number of the finite number may change right so but s may not be finite keep in mind now things are becoming different from the normal in normal uh, earlier when we had subspaces of rn everything was finite right so no problem here what we are saying is a subset s which may or may not be finite is called a basis if it is linearly independent one and every vector is a linear combination of elements of s okay so here is a theorem which uh, will not be proved that every vector space has a basis for finite right in rn we know every subspace will be having at the most n vectors right so there are generators maximum number is n so how do you get a basis there you remove which are you have got a set which is generating so remove which those elements which can be obtained by linear combination of the remaining throw that out throw out throw out whatever is left in the end that will be independent and generating so that will give a basis or what you can do is start with the one non zero element and go on adding something more right so that they become remain independent and generates everything so that is another way of getting the basis but here when it is say in rx or vector spaces which are infinite dimensional oh sorry i have not defined dimension so let us not go into that which are not finitely generated 
how do you show a basis exists right so there is vector space is not given basis is not given nothing uh, nothing is given so how do you show you don't know what that addition is what is the multiplication and so on there is general theorem now you see the abstraction coming in so one proves the theorem that whatever be the vector space whatever will be v whatever will be addition scalar multiplication you can always find a basis so what basic the idea is for a same of finitely generated if this vector space is non zero that means there is some element in it which is other than zero if it is only zero then nothing to show anyway that is zero dimension you can zero element is there if there is one non zero element in that whatever it may be start with that so i have got one set right which is linearly independent but it may not generate everything so you want to enlarge it add one more add one more but how long you can go on adding if it is not finitely generated probably you will go on doing it when do you stop how do you stop so the concept of infinite comes into picture right so it relates to some basic things in set theory uh, which will i can't go into it so this is a theorem uh, which relates with some basic concepts in set theory okay so uh, so this theorem can be proved that every vector space but again uh, there are issues there because one uses some axiom in set theory called well ordering principle which uh, some mathematicians accept some mathematicians don't accept is the axiom so if you assume that axiom you can prove this theorem if you don't assume you cannot prove or disprove this theorem so here is something new coming to you in mathematics that there are theorems which are dependent on what axiom in set theory you are starting with is like a game mathematics is like a game being played is like a football game or cricket game right if different set of rules something else may come out so there are various formulations axioms of set theory in which what is something called well ordering principle is not a part of standard set theory Ninety percent of the mathematicians assume that axiom and go ahead. You can prove this theorem. For others, unless you construct one, right, a set which is generating it, I won't believe it. Kind of thing, right? So anyway, so uh, we'll assume it that every vector space has a basis. Once that is done, if it is finite, so there are two possibilities. It is finitely generated. It is infinitely generated. if it is finitely generated then one can prove a theorem that any two bases will have the same number of elements if it is finitely generated right that means there is a finite set s which will generate which is linearly independent and will generate right so it finitely generated implies that any two bases will have the same number of elements and that is called the dimension of that finitely generated vector space if it is infinitely generated we say it has a infinite dimension it is infinite dimensional vector space so in vector spaces there are finite dimensional there are infinite dimensional right so uh, let us uh, let, because the this is the here itself let us uh, show that rx okay so let us uh, look at examples so r n x is finite dimensional dimension of this what is the dimension of this we got a generator right for r3 what was generating set 1 x x square x cube how many were there four of them and they were linearly independent so polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 is a finitely generated vector space of dimension 4 so this is of dimension n plus 1 so what will be a basis 1 x x square x to the power n is a basis right let us look at rx 
for this this was the generating side right so if this is so then l s or the span of s is equal to r x and we showed s is linearly independent also just now we showed right it is linearly independent is it okay for everybody it is linearly independent yes because if i take a linear combination right just now we showed alpha 1 p 1 plus alpha 2 p k equal to 0 the left hand side will be a polynomial which is 0 so all scalars must be equal to 0 okay so this is also a basis so this s is a basis and hence dimension of rx is infinite so that is an infinite dimensional vector space. Is it okay? Because we have got a set of generators which is not finite and they are linearly independent and generate also. So something that generates and is linearly independent is a basis. So this is a infinite S is an infinite set which is linearly independent and it generates the whole of Rx. So it is a basis. And hence, dimension of Rx is infinite. You can call it infinite. Infinite is not. Uh, what is infinite? Uh, is again a question. The dimension is three, four, five, ten, one million. What, what, what do you mean by saying dimension equal infinite? Dimension is a number. Essentially, you think of on the right hand side. You are writing the word infinite equal. So you can't write equal to infinity because infinity is not defined as a number as such. So it is better to say it is infinitely generating right or it is infinite dimensional whichever way you want to call it okay. So uh, this is uh, polynomials of degree less than or equal to 5 it is right so its dimension is equal to 6, 5, 6 elements constant okay and Rx itself is infinite dimensional that set forms a basis for it okay. So dimension is clear for a vector space okay. More examples we have all come across this R3 there are finitely generated IJK standard basis 100, 010 and 001 then RN the same thing you can write as such E1 is 100 e2 is 0 1 0 0 and so on that is the standard basis we know for matrices e j k what is e j k in that matrix the j k th element is 1 everything else is 0 right. So how many such matrices are there m cross n right they are linearly independent and generate everything. So basically saying it is nothing but r to the power m n right standard basis of that written as matrices nothing more than that. Let us look at this thing will come back to you in differential equations just want to if you look at this equation y double dash plus mu square x is equal to 0 is given that cos mu x and sin mu x form a basis of the solution space. So what does solution mean if I put y is equal to cos mu x or y equal to mu sin mu x as a functions then they will satisfy this equation right that is okay you can just check okay because when you do differentiate mu will come out it will become sin once again differentiate it will become sin again and so on. so they form one will be plus sin other will be giving a minus sin so that is solutions are both are solutions right so and this homogeneous right hand side zero so we just now seen that all if you have two solutions are there their linear combination also is a solution. So to look at the space generated by these two elements all linear combinations that is a solution space for this okay that, that is finite dimensional. So every solution is obtained as cos and mu linear combination of them are they independent that is the only question then they will form a basis will form a basis if they are independent. So that means what if I take alpha times cos mu 
x plus beta times sin mu x is equal to 0, that should say alpha is equal to 0 and beta equal to 0. Does that happen? Because again, when you say right hand side equal to 0, that is a function, right? That means this equation is equal, this is left hand side is a function which is equal to 0 for every value of x. That is how you should understand that. If it is true for every value of x, I can put any particular value, say x is equal to 0. So, alpha cos mu x plus beta mu beta sin mu x is equal to 0 for x is equal to 0, what does it give me? Alpha cos 0 is equal to 0, right? Because sin 0 is 0. So, what does that mean? Alpha is equal to 0, right? Cos, mu, cos 0 is 1, alpha times 1 plus 0 equal to 0, so alpha is equal to 1. Similarly, you can take the value say equal to pi by 2, right? Then cos is 0, that term vanishes, we will get only beta times sin, right? Or pi by 2 by mu, the value you can choose, right? So that is not important. So sin can be made as 1 for a particular value, cos can be made as 0 and other way around. So beta will be 0, so that is linearly independent. So this you will come across in uh, when you are studying solutions of a differential equation, this will come back to you. How do you describe all possible solutions of a differential equation? You will look at the homogeneous part of it, you will find a basis for homogeneous part will give you a vector space and you want to generate that vector space by describing the minimum number of independent solutions. So this kind of things will come back to you. Let us look at one more example. Let us look at uh, all polynomials of degree less than or equal to 3 with p1 equal to 0. Let us discuss this. So I am looking at the space is V, all polynomials px belonging to R3 such that p of 1, the value at 1 is 0. First of all, is V, so this is a subset of R3x, right? So is V a vector space or vector subspace? First of all, we have to check whether it is a subspace or not. That means what? That means if P1 and P2 belong to V, does this imply alpha times p1 plus beta times p2 belong to v, right? If that is the case, then okay. So what does this mean? That means p1 of 1 is equal to 0, p2 of 1 is equal to 0. That is given to me. And what does this mean? If I have to check, that means alpha p1 of v plus beta p2 of 1 that should be equal to 0. But what is this equal to? This is 0, this is 0, alpha times 0 plus beta times 0, that is equal to 0, right? So hence, V is a vector space. In itself, it is a vector space. It is a subspace of it. So the claim is, look at the set 1 minus x, 1 minus x square and 1 minus x cube. That is a set S is a subset of V, of course not equal to, right? Claim that this is a basis. This is a basis of V. So what is to be shown? First of all, I do not know whether it is a subset or not. I should verify that also, right? So let us look at in this, if I put x is equal to 1, this is 0. So, p1 is 0, p1 of 1 is 0, p2 of 1, that is 0, p3 of 1, that also is equal to 0. So, p1, p2, p3, these three polynomials are, right, in V. So, that is not a problem. So, it is a subset. So, now the claim is that it is a basis. So, what is the first thing we should check? What are the two things to be checked? One, this set S is linearly independent and second, 
it generates V. These two things to be checked. So let us check one by one both of them. So independence. So let alpha times 1 minus x plus beta times 1 minus x square plus gamma times 1 minus x cube equal to 0. Right? Let us say that is equal to 0. We have to show that alpha is equal to 0, beta is equal to 0 and gamma equal to 0. So what does this mean? Implies. So this will give me alpha plus beta plus gamma that is a constant part of the left hand side plus so this is minus so minus alpha x there is no x here okay plus minus beta times x square minus gamma times x cube equal to 0. What I have done I have just expressed left hand side as a polynomial nothing more than that because one polynomial equal to 0 polynomial I have to see what are the coefficients of the left hand side. So what does that imply? Alpha plus beta plus gamma equal to 0, coefficient of x minus alpha equal to 0, coefficient of x square minus beta equal to 0, coefficient of gamma minus gamma equal to 0. Right? Comparing coefficients of like terms. So implies alpha equal to 0 equal to beta equal to gamma. Is okay? Just using the fact that one polynomial equal to 0 means coefficient of each term must be, each power must be 0. Okay. So that so hence S is linearly independent. What is the next thing to show? It generates. So claim S is equal to V. So let us take a polynomial. Let P x belong to V implies P of 1 is equal to 0, right? And let us write P x is, is a polynomial. So it will be of the form A0 plus A1x plus V is of cubic, right? So A2x square plus A3x cube. Is that okay? P is some polynomial with some coefficients a0, we do not know what they are. We have to find them and express this with this property. I should check, check p is equal to alpha, uh, alpha times 1 minus x. So p of x 1 minus x plus beta times 1 minus x square plus gamma times for some alpha, beta and gamma. We do not know what are they. Every polynomial in V should be expressed as a linear combination. I have to find if possible alpha, beta and gamma. right? So what does it mean? If I have to find this, can I find alpha, beta and gamma? What is the right hand side? So what do I want? P x is equal to alpha plus beta plus gamma. I am re rewriting that thing again, minus alpha uh, plus minus alpha x. So what is the next one? Plus minus beta x square, uh, minus beta x square plus minus gamma x cube. That is px, right? Is it okay? If I have to find alpha, beta, gamma, I do not know what they are right. But if this is so, this must be equal to this. So that means what? Now what is the property of P given to me? P was in V. So P of 1 of V is 0. So P, one, uh, P of 1 is equal to 0. What does that imply? Alpha plus beta plus gamma is equal to 0. What is coefficient of x here? Minus x, uh, minus alpha, and what is the coefficient of x in p? Right? Oh, sorry, uh, that should be zero. Uh, p one of v. That means a zero should be equal to. See p, p one of, p of one is zero. This goes of a zero is equal to zero. So this is equal to a zero. Is it okay? Yes, by the property. 
And what is the coefficient of uh, x here? A1. What is the coefficient of x here? Minus alpha is equal to A1 minus beta is equal to A2 minus gamma is equal to A3. Is that okay? See, if P x has to be a linear combination, then this, this must be true, right? So, when I write this as a polynomial, this is nothing but P x is equal to this polynomial. But this polynomial is also equal to, we have assumed is A 0 plus A 1 x plus A 2 of x square plus A 3 of x cube, right? So, so, uh, coefficients of like powers must be equal. So, alpha plus beta plus gamma should be equal to a 0, but the property is p of 1 is equal to 0. So, I get this equation. Coefficient of x minus alpha, what is the coefficient of x here? a 1. So, a 1 must be equal to this, a 2 equal to this, this is equal to this. So, that means what? I have found p x for p x, I have found alpha, beta and gamma in terms of See, p is given to me, right? The polynomial is given to me. That means a0, a1, a2, a3 are given to me. I have to find alpha, beta, and gamma in terms of a0, a1, a2, and a3. That was the problem, right? Then it will be a linear combination. So I, what I found is a0 is equal to zero. Okay, a1 is equal to minus alpha, a2 is equal to minus beta, and a3. That means alpha is equal to minus a1 beta is equal to minus a 2 and gamma is equal to minus a 3, right. With that, so a 0 is equal to 0 anyway that is 0. So, that gives me the value. So, what I proved is that, let us come back to the example. So, this vector space p 1 equal to 0, okay, is a subspace 1 and second, these elements belong to v this is a subset of V, this is linearly independent and every element is a linear combination of that, right. And all this is becoming possible to check because everything is finite dimensional. So, we are able to bring everything to a system of equations basically, right. For example, here it came to three equations and two variables, right. You can solve them. So, that is the advantage of finite dimensional vector spaces you can do computations with them, okay. So, let us just uh, uh, for every vector if in finite dimension, what is the advantage of finite dimension? We will close there. Uh, if that means what? There is a ordered basis. Finite dimension means there is a finite basis for that, right. Given a basis, every element will have a combination, right. Every vector V is a linear combination of them. So, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha n are known. That means, this vector which is in V, which is the abstract vector space, I do not know what is that. It could be polynomial, it could be functions or anything. But if it is finite dimensional, I can associate with that vector a vector in R n, if there is a ordered basis of n vectors in that, right. Is it clear? For example, in R n, the polynomials, right, of degree n, what are the basis? 1 x, x to the power n. So, for a polynomial p with those coefficients, what is the corresponding vector? a 0, a 1, a 2 and a n. It is a vector of length n plus 1 column vector. Those are numbers. Though it was a polynomial, you get a vector associated with it, which is a number, right, which is a vector, numbers are there. So, that is advantage. So, this is what is we call as a coordinate of that vector which may be abstract and this can be put on a computer. So, computation becomes possible and this association that means for every vector v in the vector space we are associating a vector in R n if the basis is R n right. There is n elements in the basis and this association is very nice. It preserves everything that means if I take two vectors and take the coordinate that is same as coordinates of the individual and added and coordinate of the scalar multiple is that. That means what? Essentially it says for all practical purposes, your vector space V which is finite dimensional of dimension n can be recognized as 
f to the power n if it is a complex c to the power n if real r to the power n. So, that is why uh, finite dimensional abstract vector spaces are not difficult to handle because we can transform everything to r n or c n by this association by picking a basis which is ordered basis and writing the coordinates of that. What becomes difficult is when they are infinite dimensional right ok. After defining vector spaces what did we do? After having defined dimension basis and everything next thing was looking at maps between vector spaces transformations right. So, let us do that thing now. So, let us look at two abstract vector spaces V and W they will be arbitrary vector spaces right. Then a map between T and W is called a linear map if it takes a linear structure here to the linear structure there that means T of if you add take addition in the vector space V and take their images that gives you the image as the addition there in W. So, this addition is in W this addition is in V T of V plus W is T V plus T W and similarly scalar multiple of that. So, it preserves the linear structure that is all essentially we are saying right it gives due regard to the linear structure addition goes to addition of the images scalar multiple goes to the scalar multiple of the image. In finite dimension we have seen everything was connected with a matrix right a matrix multiplication gave you a linear map. And the same is possible here, but let us give example first look at all polynomials and look at the derivative take a matrix P or take a linear uh, polynomial P and look at its derivative. So, is a map P goes to P dash it is a map from polynomials to polynomials it is a map from R x to R x right derivative of a polynomial is again a polynomial yes calculus ok. So, it is a map from polynomials to polynomials and it is a linear map what is the derivative of p plus q your addition formula of derivative say is the derivative of p plus derivative of q what is derivative of alpha times p again alpha comes out is derivative of p. So, differentiation is a linear operation be it polynomials or be it you can take the space of all differentiable functions that also is a vector space on that also it will be a linear map ok. So, derivative is a linear map and that is why they become important. Look at the polynomial the map T of C or tau of C that is P of you take x and translate x by C scalar ok. The in the domain you translate and then take the image ok that is a map is it linear or not. So, what I am doing P is the polynomial P goes to Q what is Q of x Q of x is P of x minus c right. If you take two polynomials P 1 and P 2 add them P 1 plus P 2 what is the image of P 1 that is Q 1 that is P of P 1 of x minus c what is image of P 2 that is q 2 that is p of p 2 of x minus c what is the addition that is same as q 1 plus q 2. So, there is a linear map translation in the domain is a linear map ok. Translation in the range that is not linear ok that is not mentioned I think no we do not have that. What about uh, multiplying by x take a polynomial p x and multiply by x is that a linear operation? x times p 1 plus p 2 is same as x times p 1 plus x times p 2 right and scalar also comes out. So, that is linear ok. This is another important linear operation that is integration like differentiation integral of f plus g is integral of f plus integral of g integral of alpha f alpha comes out right. So, differentiation and integ integration both are linear operations on respective spaces where the functions what are the functions which should be integrable 
right? Then only it makes sense. So, for example, you can take continuous functions. All continuous functions are integrable. So, these are linear map. And these are the why. These are the why. Uh, these are the maps. They are linear, and that's why they become important in higher mathematics. Okay. Now, just wanted to say a few things. Constant maps are the easiest ones to handle, right? Nothing changes. Everything goes to a constant. Next are what are called. Next map. What are the easiest ones? Constant plus x linear maps. So linear maps are the next which are easiest to handle, and the next one are the non-linear ones which are most difficult to handle. So most of the mathematics, applied mathematics, is going from non-linear to linear. You make approximations. Try to convert whatever is non-linearity, approximate it by linearity. All of your numerical analysis will be that only, mostly. Numerical linear algebra, numerical analysis, all will be trying to convert everything to linearity because linearity is easier to handle and apply. For example, if you take derivative, right? A curve is there, and derivative is a linear approximation. Nearby, it becomes linear. That's why linear approximation, tangent line approximations, become important in calculus, and they are the ones which are used in your calculators. How do you think if you punch a key on the calculator? So, what is the value of sine thirty-seven point five? How does that give you immediately some value? What it does at the background, there is an algorithm which says replace this by tangent line approximation. Linear and calculate and give me the value. So all algorithms, most of them are based on. It could be slightly better quadratic approximation and so on, but linear is the simplest one. So these are linear maps, and of course, if it is a finite dimensional vector spaces, right? Then every linear map will give rise to a matrix, ordered basis, like we have done it earlier. Same, right? So they are easier to handle. So we'll stop here today. Next time, what we'll do is. See how the notion of angle, right, is taken over to abstract vector spaces, perpendicularity. Okay.